Hello and welcome. We are excited to share a selection of 10 of the best fictional books for young readers published in 2020. These books were selected by a team of Chicago Public Library librarians. And for the full list of titles, as well as all of the best books for kids published in 2020, you can visit shypublive.org slash best of the best. Now let's get to the books. We'll be discussing 10 of our favorites in alphabetical order. I'm Katie Eckert, a librarian in the Children's Services Department. And I'm Tamala Chambers, a children's librarian at the Woodson Regional Library. I'd like to start with an awesome series about an eight-year-old super sleuth by the name of Azalea Lane. She is creative, inquisitive, and pretty amazing sister to her little sister, Tiana, and big sister, Nia. She lives in the nation's capital in a big white house, which she affectionately calls the White House with her restauranteur mother and lawyer father. She loves her family, her neighborhood and school, especially when they go on field trips. A trip to the Smithsonian National Zoo with her third grade class, plus the chance to create a diorama for extra credit adds more awesome to her pretty amazing life. Azalea can already hear her name during the principal's morning recognitions for the outstanding diorama that she's going to make over the weekend. Until Greeny, her little sister's favorite pet stuffed frog, goes missing and she absolutely cannot sleep without it. Her parents are busy with work and big sister Nia is busy rehearsing for her lead role as Dorothy in the school musical, The Wiz. It's up to Azalea to solve the mystery of the missing stuffed frog. Will she be able to help Tiana and finish her diorama in time to get the extra credit? Azalea is a likable character who middle and older siblings alike will relate to. Nikki Smith does a great job of highlighting the developmental differences between sisters as well as their bond. This is a great book for newly independent readers with strategically placed illustrations to break up text, a glossary, literacy activities, and directions for creating a diorama. Amazing Azalea is back to solve another mystery, this time on behalf of her older sister Nia in the dramatic life of Azalea Lane. Life with a third grader is still pretty astonishing, and big sister Nia has won yet another lead in the school play, this time as Willa Wonka. The entire Lane family is planning a surprise celebration and Azalea is in charge of decorations. She couldn't be more excited to use her creative skills again. That is, until big sister Nia's failed dress rehearsal. Suddenly, the special effects on Nia's costume won't work, the mics won't work, and everything that could go wrong does. Azalea notices a boy laughing each time something goes wrong and suspects the rehearsal mishaps aren't merely coincidental. She knows the celebration won't go well if Nia is sad and she must do something to help. But will she be able to prove foul play? Will her observation and problem solving skills be enough to solve the mystery of the play saboteur? Like the first book in the series, The Dramatic Life of Azalea Lane focuses on her STEAM mindset, problem solving, observation, and creativity while underscoring the power of family bonds. Readers who enjoyed the first book and related activities will enjoy creating their own costumes and acting out their own drama. If you like books that reflect the warmth of close-knit sibling relationships, then you'll enjoy the next series presented by Katie. Thanks, Tamala. Have you ever been camping? Astra's family is about to leave for a camp out, but she's scared of mosquito bites, scary bears, and the idea of using an outhouse. Ew. But her twin brother Apollo promises that whatever happens, they'll get through it together. And that's true for all four of the adventures in this chapter book series. The series follows the eight-year-old twins who are second generation Hmong Americans as they enjoy everyday adventures like camping, fishing, attending the Hmong July soccer festival and the Hmong New Year, cel New Year celebration. Astrid and Apollo are a fun and relatable pair of siblings. 
But what makes this series special is the way it features Hmong children in a positive and authentic way. Both author VT Badenya and illustrator Dara Lashia Lee are Hmong American themselves, and they set out to make sure Hmong children could see themselves represented in books. This doesn't feel like a history lesson though. Don't worry, the Hmong culture is seamlessly woven into the stories and the books have great back matter that features facts about the Hmong, popular foods, a glossary and discussion guides. It's a great introduction to an ethnic group rarely featured in children's literature. If your young readers love Astra and Apollo in these four adventures, more books are coming in 2021. And if you like their camping adventure, you'll love our next book, which Tamala is going to tell you about. Thanks, Katie. Next up is The Camping Trip by Jennifer Mann. Ernestine has been invited to go camping with her aunt and cousin, and she can't be more excited. She has never been camping before and makes sure to pack all of the supplies on the list, even if she doesn't think it will all fit. While she may be unsure of fitting all of the supplies in her bag, she is certain that she is going to have a great time. However, when Ernestine and her family arrive at the campground, she discovers that camping is a lot different and harder than expected. Swimming at the campground is different than swimming at the Y. There are no fish at the Y. And hiking, despite what her dad says, is a lot harder than just walking. It's cold, it's dark, she misses her dad, and Ernestine is no longer sure camping was such a good idea after all. Will Ernestine's woodsy sleepover turn out to be the good kind of exciting she hoped for? Find out in this cute story featuring African-American characters about how open-mindedness can open a world of new discoveries and memorable experiences. Speaking of new discoveries, the next title, Donut Feed the Squirrels by Mika Song, is a graphic novel for young readers about squirrels, Norma and Belly, and their discovery of a donut truck. Norma decides to surprise Belly by making pancakes for breakfast. However, the excitement of the surprise is too much to contain and Norma leaves the pancakes to cook while she wakes Belly up. The squirrels receive a rather unpleasant surprise when they arrive to burnt pancakes. Ever the optimist, Belly assures Norma that a breakfast of chestnuts would do just fine until the aroma of crispy sugar oil and a hint of linden flowers Wops over the pine and Norma and Belly must investigate. They follow their noses to a red truck where people are giving the human something in exchange for a food called donuts. All of the squirrels must taste the donut. But what can the squirrels give the human in exchange? Chestnuts and some weevils for good measure, of course. However, the human does not want chestnuts in exchange for the donuts. In fact, the human does not want Norma and Belly at his truck at all. Norma and Belly are more determined than ever to taste the donut and devise a plan to get their hands on the treat. Join Norma and Belly on a comical quest to get donuts, not just for themselves, but their whole squirrel community. Young readers will find humor in Norma and Belly's slapstick tinged heist and enjoy the onomatopoeia fueled action. Donut Feed the Squirrels is a story of the power of teamwork, problem solving, and the hidden gems found in the unexpected. And now moving on to a title for older readers, we have Ghost Squad. Based in Dominican folklore, Ghost Squad follows 12-year-old Luceli, who lives with her father in the town of St. Augustine, where he runs a ghost tour business. Luceli is very close to the rest of her family, but there's a catch. Most of them are ghosts. Members of her family turn into fireflies when they pass away, but only Luceli can see them in their spirit form. When something unusually creepy happens, Luceli realizes that the ghosts of her dead family members are in danger, and she teams up with her best friend Sid to find a spell that will help them fix the mess. But the spell they cast goes horribly wrong and puts their whole town in danger. Now they must team up with Sid's witchy, leather jacket-wearing grandma to save everyone. With this spooky adventure, author Clarabel A. Ortega draws upon her Dominican heritage to create a story about family, both the kind of family you're born with and the kind of family you create. This book has modern fun touches. For example, Lucelli proudly declares herself a Hufflepuff, but it's the more subtle touches, like Lucelli's opinionated, ever-present ancestors, her dedication to her loved ones, and an emphasis on less next food, love, and folklore that gives this book its distinctive spirit. 
no pun intended. The audiobook version is especially fun. Ghost Squad is a warmly spooky, but not too spooky middle grade novel, perfect for young readers who like a little fantasy, a little action, and stories about kids saving the day. And now allow me to read you the first few lines of our next title. Sometimes you make a friend and it feels like you have known that friend your entire life. Hedgehog, Muddy, Mole, Owl, Beaver, Hen and Chicks, and me, Anika Mae Flores. You may think that it has always been this way, but it has not. There was a series of events that brought us all together. This is our friendship story. This is the story of us. So opens a story packed with gentle adventure and lovable characters, but what's it about? Well, when Hedgehog's beloved stuffed dog is lost in a storm, Hedgehog too feels lost. As Hedgehog searches for her lost friend, she encounters various animals, such as Mole, who greets everyone she meets in a different language, and Owl, who sprinkles lofty vocabulary and definitions into conversation. Soon, Hedgehog's world becomes far bigger, far true friendlier, and far more full of life than she ever imagined it could be. Caldecott Honor winner Lauren Castillo has created endearing mixed media illustrations that bring this story to life. It's the perfect book for young readers who are ready to move on from picture books because it has short, heavily illustrated chapters that challenge readers without overwhelming them. It also works wonderfully as a read aloud. I try not to play favorites, but this story's message about community, courage, and new beginnings is one of my favorite books published in 2020, and I hope you'll join these friends on their adventures. Next, from Newbery Honor winner Amy Timberlake and Caldecott medalist John Classen, meet Skunk and Badger. Badger is a badger who does important rock work. He likes quiet, order, and no interruptions. Skunk is a skunk who needs a place to stay. He likes chickens, making and eating big breakfasts and gazing at the moon. So how did these two opposites become roommates in Aunt Lula's brownstone? And more importantly, will they be able to stay roommates? Skunk and Badger are one unlikely pair, and they might remind you a little bit of some classic odd couples like Frog and Toad or Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. But there's nothing old fashioned about this story, which is the first in a series. It's funny, silly and heartwarming with a subtle and timely message about sharing privilege. This is a chapter book, but it's got really broad age appeal. It works great as a cozy solo read, but it also has long words that are fun to listen to and make it a great read aloud too, or check out the fabulous audiobook version. Anyone who has ever had to share a living space with siblings, classmates, or even parents will be able to relate to this very fun, silly, and special skunk and badger. Moving on to another title for the older end of this category is Stella Diaz Never Gives Up by Angela Dominguez. This is a story of nine-year-old Stella who loves marine life and plans to spend the summer learning as much as she can. She earns a spot in the Shed Aquarium summer camp, kicking off what is sure to be the best summer ever. Just when she thought the summer couldn't get any better, her mother announces a, una sorpresa a surprise trip to Mexico. Although Stella is a little nervous about not speaking Spanish well, she doesn't let it damper her excitement at getting to visit the ocean. Stella's visit to the ocean turns out to be the push needed to jumpstart her future career as a marine biologist. There she learns that ocean animals need protection and decides that she is going to do something about it. The question is, what? Stella learns all she can about conservation but the more she learns, the sadder she gets about the problem of pollution and its impact on the oceans. She wants more than anything for her friends and family to get involved with her cause, but everyone seems too busy. Her mother is busy with work, her best friend Jenny is busy with her own activities, and her big brother Nick is too busy with his own transitions to notice. Luckily for Stella, her pen pal Stanley and the kids at the shed camp care and are willing to help. Still, Stella wants her family and best friend to get involved and must find a way to get everyone to rally around this important issue because saving the ocean is everyone's responsibility. This title, based on the author's experience and passions, is centered on a Latinx character and her family and contains Spanish words that is accessible to all readers. Fans of Stella Diaz has something to say, 
will enjoy her evolution as an empowered, budding environmental activist. The author includes additional resources and suggestions for taking action toward reducing pollution. Next up is Katie with another title in a series for younger readers. Thanks, Tamala. We're going back to the early end of this age category now. Woo woo! All aboard the Thai Express for Thai's Travels, a new emerging reader series. In Thai's Travels, All Aboard, no one in his family will play with him, so Thai makes his own fun, and soon everyone's getting involved. In Thai's Travels, Zip Zoom, Thai can't wait to ride his brand new scooter at the park. Other kids zip and zoom by like race cars, but all Thai can do is wobble. Will he give up? Ty's Travels is the first I can read series that features a black family. These books are great for readers just beginning to read on their own because they contain basic language, simple sentences, and word repetition perfect for kids learning how to read. Plus, they also feature vibrant illustrations by Nina Mata. If your young reader isn't quite ready to read on their own, Ty's Travels also works great as a read aloud with fun onomatopoeia like clickety clack, woo woo, and whoosh to read aloud. Author Kelly Starling Lyons said that she created Ty's Travels because she wanted to make something that embodied black boy joy. And I think she definitely succeeded with this delightful series. On the topic of black joy, next up is Ways to Make Sunshine by Renee Watson and illustrated by Nina Matata. Fourth grade Ryan is strong like her name and carries himself with the self-assuredness of a great leader. When her father loses his job, resulting in an unexpected move, she handles it majestically. After all, her name does mean king. Change can be difficult, but Ryan is always cooking up something, a plan of action or testing a new recipe. However, dad is always tired. Her big brother is bossier than ever. Her recipes aren't coming out right and it's getting harder for Ryan to find the bright spot in her setbacks. Will she create a new recipe to make the best lemonade out of life's lemons? Fans of Ramona Quimby will enjoy the first book in the Ryan Hart series from Newberry Honor and Coretta Scott King award-winning author Renee Watson. Check it out to find out all of the ways Ryan and her family make sunshine. Thank you so much for joining us today. And don't forget, for the full list of the best fiction for younger readers published in 2020, more videos featuring best of the best books published last year and best of the best books from previous years, visit shodpublive.org slash kids best of the best. Happy reading.